colleagues, friends and distinguished guests, in a world that is dealing with the worst pandemic in 100 years and that is confronted with further threats such as climate change, loss of biodiversity or social inequality, there is a critical demand for research and knowledge. And rightfully so. The pandemic has demonstrated impressively that research can provide crucial solutions to pressing problems in short time. Yet, we should not forget that these solutions are based on research results which evolved long before the pandemic outbreak. As a shining example of such research, let me refer to the method of mRNA vaccination that was supported by the DFG actually from the year 2000 to 2008 through different funding programs. The founder of BioNTech, Professor Shaheen, has stated that without the research performed in these years, it would not have been possible to produce the vaccine now. Today, we need to make sure that we will be supporting research as precious as that from Professor Shaheen and his wife. Now, in my opinion, the best way to achieve that is funding the intrinsic motivation and the curiosity of researchers. Yet, there is more to do and the task to orchestrate research accordingly is a global task, as it was in past month. So, what enabled the global research community to come up with analysis of the new virus and potential remedies against it so quickly? First of all, sufficient resources for funding. We need to make sure, of course, that our national research systems have the financial power to invest in key projects, even if their relevance today may not be visible entirely. Of course, the question of sufficient resources is not in today's focus, but it is of such fundamental importance that we need to keep it in mind. Secondly, a huge knowledge repository established over many decades of basic research within each respective field of science and the humanities. This, unfortunately, is less obvious to many decision takers and we have to stress the significance of long-term investment in basic research whenever talking to politicians, industrialists or even the general public. Thirdly, academic freedom for individual researchers to select and carry out research according to their own curiosity, not prescribed by programs or political wishes. And fourthly and finally, I want to touch upon this panel's main topic, the importance of international cooperation. Today's and even more so tomorrow's complex challenges can hardly be met by one team of researchers alone. Very often the very best in a given field have to cooperate or at least exchange data, experiences or specimen. And it is a long time ago, if ever, that the best in a given field or those who could substantially contribute are located in a single country, no matter how advanced or big or rich it might be. Therefore, for the earliest possible and most successful crisis prevention, as well as for the general progress of humankind, we have to support the emergence of new and secure knowledge by guaranteeing that researchers all over the world can share their data and findings and can cooperate as freely and constructively as possible. The call for academic cross-border cooperation has never been more urgent than today. A typical answer to my appeal is that research is international anyway and scientists have an intrinsic motivation for international cooperation. That is true, but 
No matter how international modern research might be or become, it remains embedded in national patterns such as specific rules and laws and of course differences in understanding or accepting standards, but also cultural differences, different political perspectives or even financial or ideological interests, to name just some major barriers of cross-border research. As science organizations, we need to focus on the framework conditions for free and border crossing research, making best use of our platforms such as the STS Forum or the Global Research Council for this task. We all have to work on politics and the public opinion to convince accordingly. To say it with Subra Suresh, the founder of the Global Research Council, good science anywhere is good for humankind everywhere. And this is best done surpassing national borders. Thank you very much.